Hello everyone, welcome to TTV. Today we bring you a very special guest who's not only one of the most influential personalities in Pakistan, but also around the world. He has served as the Special Assistant to Prime Minister of Pakistan for Overseas Pakistani and Human Resource Development, as well as Chairman of Pakistan Tourism Board until last year. So without further ado, let's welcome His Excellency Sayyid Zulfiqar Bukhari. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, for joining us. What a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for having me. I believe this is your first time in Oman, so welcome to Oman. What really brings you to this country? Um, this trip is probably most of all about, um, it's, it, it's a gesture in all humility to say thank you to His Majesty, His government, uh, his team, um, and most of all the overseas diaspora of Pakistan for all the efforts they've done over decades for hosting a 200,000 odd Pakistanis here and especially recently during our, the pandemic of COVID 2019 and onwards. Yes, and talking about these two brotherly countries, Your Excellency, how do you see the relationship between Oman and Pakistan? I see it now, inshallah, going from strength to strength. Um, I do feel that for some reason, you know, although we're so close together, two and a half hour flight, just literally of Gwadir, uh, you know, between us, I just feel that we should have been far along the road than where we are. Um, but our High Commissioner has done a wonderful job in bringing a very successful delegation over to Pakistan after 20 years with His Excellency, the Chairman of the Chamber of Commerce and distinguished guests, distinguished uh, businessmen from the Omani community and distinguished businessmen from the Pakistani Omani community. And uh, that was very extremely well received in Pakistan by the President and by uh, His Excellency, the Prime Minister Imran Khan himself. And I think that has basically, it was an eye-opener for both countries of the synergy they have and the potential and the opportunity they have together uh, to work together in, in various different sectors. Right. Talking about different sectors, Your Excellency, you know, community welfare is one of the main areas when we talk about the embassy role in different countries in foreign land. Now, talking on those community welfare, what kind of expect expectation do you have from the community members in the country and what are your plans during these next couple of days in Oman? Well, it's been overwhelming so far. Um, I'm really, really humbled by the response I've gotten from um, the people, uh, the Pakistani diaspora over here. Um, I can't thank them enough. There's people that have been living, elders that have been living here for 40, 50 years, and then you've got the youth as well. And we've got three different events going on over the next three days, starting from tonight. And we've had some good meetings with the Labour Minister and tomorrow with the Health Minister and also with the Religious Minister. So um, overall, I think it's been fantastic. And like I said, uh, the Prime Minister has a clear vision for overseas Pakistanis. And it's really for the first time in, in 70 years to give him that kind of ownership of Pakistan and not just to be used as a form of donations or fundraising or remittances. And we want to kind of give them that sweat equity and that, um, that they, they have a chance of choosing their destiny uh, or the destiny of the nation uh, now in the upcoming elections. And um, so, you know, you'll see a lot more involvement of Pakistan now because of the overseas voting rights. Right. You know, Your Excellency, that was going to be my next question, that what exactly is the leadership of Pakistan expecting from the Pakistani nationals living across the globe and also from Oman? So thank you for touching upon that. Now, we don't want to forget the point where you played a key role when it came to the repatriation of flights not just from the Sultanate of Oman, but across the globe. Can you tell us a little bit about how did you get started with that? I mean, when often I sit with colleagues who were involved in it and uh, there were crazy times. You know, we would meet at 7, 8 a.m. in the morning. Um, you know, Ambassador Mozam, who's now the High Commissioner in the UK, uh, Moid Youssef, who was our National Security Advisor, and then we'd have someone from NCOC uh, come in, and then various ambassadors of different countries and how many flights we're bringing in from here and we'd have to authorize we, we authorized 2,000 per week and then we'd jump to five then we'd jump to seven and a half then 10 then 12 15 so it was a period of months that was going on so it was a very difficult time but uh, let me tell you this what made it easy what made it easy was our overseas diaspora um, you know without trying to sound biased in any way or form 
I, I genuinely believe Pakistan is probably, and Pakistanis are probably the most charitable uh, nation in the world. Um, the way they helped uh, the more vulnerable, let it be in, in giving them ration, let it be in paying for tickets, let it be in some countries paying for fees in prisons so that they can go back to Pakistan and not get uh, COVID in prison where they're cramped up. Um, you know, they went out of their way, let it be UAE, Saudi Arabia. Oman was special because Oman was the most seamless. Uh, A, His, His Majesty and again, his entire government, but, uh, and, uh, and the exemptions they gave for any uh, overdue fees that was before exiting. Uh, B, the role of uh, the High Commissioner was extraordinary. Uh, let it be the flights or let it be in streamlining the diaspora. But the diaspora itself, you know, it gave well over $150,000 uh, into the Prime Minister's fund. It gave food to hundreds, uh, if not thousands of families across Oman, all across Oman. Tickets, um, you know, any kind of welfare that they required at the time. And they were, it was the most seamless and it was the most troubleless in, in a way. Um, so that's why, again, I go back to the point that this trip was more of a, a thank you for helping the people out and Pakistan out. Your Excellency, you have been the chairman of Pakistan Tourism Board for quite some time. Mm. How do you see the shift in Pakistan tourism, you know, when compared to previous years? Mm. Has it become better? Is it going to get better? Because a lot of people in Oman, you know, they still travel to Pakistan. A lot of people that I know here from different nationalities, they are still wanting to see the real side, the mm. true picture of Pakistan. Well, you have to take them to the real side to start with. But you see, in the GCC, there's a tendency to come for winter for hunting. Uh, and, you know, they go near Rahim Yar Khan and they do their hunts. Uh, Pakistan in the last uh, three years, I think, has gone leaps and bounds. Um, we were number one in Condé Nast, which is one of the largest publications in the world as, as number one most exotic uh, location. Uh, British Backpackers gave us number one, Forbes magazine along with a whole stream uh, of uh, influences. Um, but what it did was that it put, it put Pakistan on a map and it showed its beauty, which was a great thing. But it's a bad thing because the, we as a government had to play a lot of catch up in infrastructure and facilities. Right. Um, what COVID did was 100% was that it made the middle and the upper class, because of travel restrictions, it made them explore their own country for the first time very well. And now people are going all across the country exploring it. Where we can benefit from countries like Oman and other GCC countries is that, you know, there's a, there's a wave of, let's say, an Islamophobic wave going across uh, Europe. And although I don't like using the term, but, you know, what we call halal or Muslim tourism, people sometimes that are more from conservative backgrounds or conservative countries, they don't want to go to the normal place. Uh, where everyone else is going, the normal tourist destination. Right. And Pakistan and Oman can bridge together and be that sort of more family-friendly, family-orientated uh, uh, tourism destinations. Um, Pakistan's obviously got, it's got the most amount of diversity uh, from deserts to mountains and whatnot. And Oman has, mashallah, you know, amazing resorts and great beaches and uh, a lot of history and heritage as well. Um, so I think if we come together in tourism and, and our, I think that our thinkings are very alike. Um, and we, in fact, we would like to be more like Oman in terms of tolerance uh, and um, in terms of the way that people are very calm and to their, each to their own right. and every religion, sect uh, and color is respected. Um, and that's where we want to be as well. Right. Now, Your Excellency, one last question is that do you have any message for the Pakistani community residing in the Sultan of Oman? Uh, I have two messages. First, again, is from the bottom of my heart that um, thank you for everything you did uh, during the pandemic and especially when brothers and sisters helped out their more vulnerable brothers and sisters get back to their country. And two, I will be asking for your help again when we get closer to the elections to register yourself to vote because it doesn't matter who you vote for but you have the right and it's, it's, your, it's your own given human right to have that, the right to vote in Pakistan. So register your, yourself when the time comes to vote for, your, to vote for the leadership of your country. Assalamu alaikum. I want to say overseas Pakistanis who are in Oman. I want to say two things. 
پہلی کہ آپ کو طے دل سے میں آپ کا شکریہ ادا کرنا چاہتا ہوں کہ جس طریقے سے آپ لوگوں نے اپنے بھائیوں اور بہنوں کو فیملیز کو جن کے پاس وہ وہ چیزیں نہیں تھیں واپس جانے کے لیے وہ وسائل نہیں تھے واپس جانے کے لیے جس طریقے سے آپ نے ان کو راشن ان کی ٹکٹس کے پیسے دیے تھے میں آپ کا مشکور ہوں پاکستان آپ کو سلام پیش کرتا ہے اس پہ دوسری چیز کہ آنے والے الیکشنز کے لیے آپ کو اپنے آپ کو رجسٹر کرنا ہوگا ووٹنگ کے لیے یہ میں آپ کو یہ نہیں کہہ رہا کس کو ووٹ کرنا ہے لیکن میں آپ کو یہ ضرور کہہ رہا ہوں کہ اپنے آپ کو رجسٹر کرائیں کہ آپ کو اپنے ملک میں پاکستان میں جو آپ کا انسانی حقوق ہے آپ کا ووٹ وہ آپ کو ملنا چاہیے اور آپ کو ووٹ کرنا چاہیے چاہے جس کے لیے بھی کریں تو یہ دو چیز یہ ایک چیز ہے میں پھر سے آپ لوگوں کو آپ کی مدد چاہوں گا کہ باقیوں کو آگاہ کریں کہ رجسٹر ٹو ووٹ بہت بہت شکریہ Thank you so much, Your Excellency, for taking out time and having this wonderful conversation with us. It Thank was you. a pleasure having you. Thank you so much. For more interesting videos, stay tuned to TTV.